In this video, we're going to have a look at the Azure policy system uh, as part of our Manage Identity and Access components. The Azure policy is a bit like group policy in our environments, but it allows us to apply restrictions and allows us to apply settings to our Azure environment and our Azure infrastructure. We'll take a look at a very quick policy for applying a restriction to specific locations. So if you do want to restrict all of your resources within your Azure subscription to only being able to deploy to a single region or multiple regions in the environment, we can accomplish that. On to the demo. On with the demo. Here we have our Azure portal and our Azure environment to work with. And we're going to create a brand new resource group here. Out of all the fun resource groups that I have, we're going to build a brand new one and we're going to call this resource group temp because I'm feeling very inventive today. Let's make sure this resource group is deployed to UK SaaS and let's review and create that. Now, remember when we deploy a resource group to a specific location, a resource group is actually a global entity and the location is really more of just a label that can be read by other applications and other deployment methods inside Azure. So what we want to do is we want to restrict this resource group down here to only being able to deploy resources to a specific environment. To do that, we need to go and use an Azure policy. So if we look for Azure policy inside the search section, because unlike Windows 10, this search does actually work. And in here, we can go to our policy definitions. So these policy definitions are a little bit like group policy in the sense that they can restrict things or configure for how things actually work inside Azure itself. Microsoft have been nice and have provided us with many, many, many policies down here that we could possibly use in our environment. Now, obviously, we don't need to know all of these individual policies, but we'll just go and take a look at one of these inside here for location. Location, let's just search for that. We have this policy down here for cloud locations. Just take note, we do also have policies. And a second thing in here, we actually have something else called, if I just refresh that, an initiative. Now, an initiative, if I switch these definition types, just to make you aware, uh, these are initiatives that are created by Microsoft themselves, including something like UK Official and UK NHS. An initiative actually contains a number of different policies inside it. You can think of it like a policy group more than anything. And of course, you could create your own initiatives if you really wanted to. This one for UK Official and UK NHS, on the other hand, is developed by Microsoft and in theory, if you apply this to your Azure infrastructure or your Azure subscription, you should be compliant to work with UK official and UK NHS data. Going back to my location here, we're going to drop into allowed locations and you'll notice that this is a JSON file. So why is it a JSON file? Because everything's a JSON file. The whole world's a JSON file. Everything's a JSON file. Everything's a YAML file. If we are living in the matrix, you are going to be a JSON file somewhere in a database. Be quite a large JSON file, admittedly, but you will be. So that means that if you want to build your own custom policies, sure, you can do. There is actually a wizard to build that now, uh, but you can also build it as a JSON file should you really want to. So let's go and assign this policy somewhere and pick a scope. We could assign this to an actual subscription. Uh, we could assign this also to a resource group inside that subscription. So we could go a level down. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to assign this policy to the resource group of temp, the one that I just created. Notice this policy enforcement section down here for enabled and disabled. Take note, policies can affect things, can affect settings, and can affect how people work. Do not enable this by default. Disable it by default. Configure it, play with it make sure it's actually working and then actually enforce the policy and to enforce the settings that you're actually applying because you never know however careful you are you might still screw it up so if we look in allowed locations i'm going to select allowed locations here for uk south and uk west just those two regional locations for azure uh, we're not going to bother with any remediation inside here and we're not going to bother with any custom non-compliance messages. We just want to see what Microsoft provides us as the default for when we actually go off and deploy one of these um, uh, policies or try and deploy something that the policy doesn't like us deploying. So 
very very quickly that's all built and if we go back to policy definitions and go back to overview we should be able to see this policy eventually here if we refresh this it might take a couple of minutes to pop up did we create that yes we created that yes it got deployed to msdn slash temp there we go it got there eventually how long do things take to deploy in Azure? How long is a piece of string? Sometimes it takes five seconds, sometimes it takes five minutes, sometimes it might take a couple of hours. Who knows? Anyway, this is now deployed. We can drop back to our resource group here and we can click on our temp resource group and we can see, well, not a lot here at the moment. There is a policy section and we can actually see that allowed locations policy is applied directly to this resource group but we can go and try and deploy something to this that that policy does not like. So let's go and create a virtual machine. And if we click on a virtual machine here, let's create a very basic Azure virtual machine. Within a very basic Azure virtual machine, we will deploy that to the temp resource group location and we'll call this Mike VM. We can deploy this with Ubuntu or maybe we deploy this with something like Windows Server 2022. Everything's fine so far because I am selected on the region of UK South. But if I try to change that and deploy this to somewhere like, for example, Australia East, or if I deploy this to somewhere like East US, on the other hand, this policy will kick in momentarily. Now, because I've deployed that policy quite quickly, it's not actually showing me any errors here. After a few minutes and that policy actually taking effect, you would actually see an error displayed down here as well before you attempt to complete the wizard. But since it's not doing that, I'm going to drive forward here just to prove a point. And it would help if I did not fat finger these passwords and I could type the same thing twice. We will tell Microsoft that I do have a license, which is fine. I do. Honest, Governor, you believe me, right? Um, let's go and click all the way through here and attempt to review and create this virtual machine on this temp resource group. Notice I got validation failed. And if I click here to view those details, notice the resource was disallowed by policy request disallowed by policy. If we click on the raw error, because sometimes with errors in Azure, the error details basically just tell you computer says no and doesn't give you much information. But if I click on the raw error down here and scroll down all the way through this, I should be able to see uh, specifically that list of allowed locations from the policy parameters that we set previously. So that's a very, very basic policy that you might actually want to assign to your environment or to locations inside your environment to stop people deploying things to different regions. If we go into definitions down here on these policies, we can also see many, many other settings. Best advice to give with policies is to start wide. So for example, restricting whole regions or even for example, having a quick look here into SKUs and changing things for allowed virtual machine SKU sizes. Thinking very, very big and very, very wide and then slowly starting to work through to more granular operations inside your environment. And that concludes looking at a basic overview of the Azure policy system here uh, within the Azure portal. Remember, everything you can do through pointy clicky, you can also do through typey typey. And RTFM is always your friend, i.e. read the flipping manual. Thank you very much.